Yellowstone supervolcano has been shaken by the magnitude 4 earthquake that we had in nearby Idaho to the west and there's been foreshocks and aftershocks of this 4 magnitude earthquake. We know it's uh, the same basically magma area that feeds Yellowstone. Yellowstone is one of the 21 supervolcanoes, some odd supervolcanoes of the earth and uh, it last erupted, had major super eruptions 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. And in the past 70,000 years, it has had 80 eruptions. Now, we know that it's home to 60% uh, of the world's geysers, and it has over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. Uh, we'll take a look at the shake map of the USGS. Idaho has shaken, um, the or four magnitude earthquake has shaken the whole area and it uh, most definitely has shaken Yellowstone supervolcano, uh, even the Yellowstone Lake as we see here, that blue section around the five o'clock position. We're going to see the GPS stations showing the deformation, movement, and what's going on with that area. Is it inflating? Is it deflating? Let's take a look at the maps together. Please support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. So here we are at Sizemore Berkeley and this is the map of the area. Uh, just ba basically northeast of Boise, Idaho, in Stanley. And uh, this is the area of the Yellowstone supervolcano. And if we go into the area of the lake, we'll see that uh, upside down U shape is Yellowstone Lake. It, it's, uh, this is the crater. See all, you can almost see the outline here. This is the crater, and it's in, on top of the crater. It's about a third of the, a quarter of the uh, crater onto the uh, uh, southeast side. This is Hebgen Lake right there, where they had the 7 some odd, 7.3 magnitude earthquake in 9, August uh, 19, 1959. So you can see all this activity here in Yellowstone and this area here okay it's obviously uh, not very close but still it has been shaken and this are these are the earthquakes prior to that a couple of days before 3.1 and this is the aftershock of 2.8 let's go and see the frequency okay this is the shake map this is here this is Hebgen Lake that Z and this is Yellowstone Lake Sorry, is that Hebgen Lake? It's very difficult to see under this. Yeah, that, that Z right there is Hebgen Lake, and this is Yellowstone Lake. This is the crater right there. Now, USGS stops the lines in this square that we see, and it's very intensive, as you can see, even though it's only a four magnitude. Um, I would venture to say it uh, did shake all these areas. This is Salt Lake right here, Salt Lake. So... Um, this area here is overdue for a um, 6.57 magnitude earthquake, which happens about every 3,000 years, like clockwork. One of the past videos that we did uh, 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 an, uh, an analysis of that, USGS told us that this, this is what happens in that area. So the intensity, I took the intensity out because otherwise we wouldn't be able to see anything. Okay. Uh, let's take the intensity out again. These are the fault lines, as you can see right here. And this is the area of the supervolcano right here. Yellowstone supervolcano. And that's the lake over, sitting over the roof of the magma chamber. And they've, uh, the geologists have told us that um, even a stiff wind over the surface of that lake is uh, dangerous for the 
roof of the magma chamber because of the fact that supervolcanoes are such so much bigger than regular volcanoes and um, the area covered the lake that covers this area of course sitting on top of the roof of the magma chamber even the stiff wind a breeze going over the lake surface water can cause an earthquake and that's something they don't want happening obviously so this is the uh, frequency the shake frequencies you can see I would venture to say yes Yellowstone has been shaken by this let's go to the geodesy to see let's take okay let's go to the, take off the uh, aerial so you can see let's go topographic okay that's it Yellowstone National Park okay Great Salt Lake okay let's go to the geodesy you can see some movement okay this is uh, one of the GPS is station OFW2. It's basically north of, well, between Hebgen Lake and Yellowstone Lake. That's Yellowstone Lake right there. And this is the movement, the deformation. If the map shows plotting east, uh, up means it's going east. It's not going up, so it's going west. And this here shows north-south. If it's going up, it goes north. It's not going up, it's going south. So this is going southwest. And look at the movement from 2004 up to, to now, okay? You can, this is, it's going, first of all, it was going deflating and then it really inflating and then deflating somewhat, inflating, and now it's a period of deflating. So this is the movement here between Hebgen Lake and Yellowstone Lake. Uh, let's take another one between, let's take something closer to Hebgen Lake right here see what's happening there okay that's inflating okay it's going again it's going uh, southwest and it's really inflating even though it's seasonal it is inflating since 2008 up to now you can see that it is inflating and this is station P457 let's go closer to um, Shall we go to uh, this here, this one here? What's happening here? Okay, this is w very strange. Something happened here, maybe they adjusted. Again, it's southwest. This seems more seasonal. Let's go to this one in Butte. Uh, again, it's seasonal inflating. So um, this is the situation here. Between Hebgen Lake and uh, Yellowstone Lake, it's basically up, down, up, down, and uh, basically inflating this one closer to Idaho. And this is the beautiful lava flow, as you can see here, craters of the moon. Uh, this is what was uh, in our shake map. If we go into that area, craters of the moon lava, this is it right here, as you can see. Okay, beautiful lava flow. Uh, shake the shake map is of course intensifying there let's go here what's happening there okay that's basically deflating okay and let's go around salt lake city since we're here what's happening in salt lake city area let's take this one okay that's inflating it's going southwest southwest and basically it's inflating a little bit okay so i'll leave links below for you for this you can this is a geodesic shows you all the gps stations in the world and you can see uh where yours is let's put in the uh, takeoff okay put in the map okay you can see where yours is let's go to hawaii what's happening in hawaii that's not a good one Let's take another one, because Hawaii, as we know, Kilauea is erupting. Okay, let's just take a quick look, if it'll let us. Okay, let's take a quick look. They have a few GPS stations there, a lot of them. Not a few, a lot of them. Okay. Where are we? Do we go out too far? Yes, we did. Okay. Okay, have to go slower. Okay. 
Uh, Halimamau Crater, let's see this one here. Again, it's not good. What's happening here? Okay, let's take another one. Okay, get some here. Okay, look at this. This is going all over the place. It was going west, then uh, up, and then well, wow, okay. <laughs> All right, and then uh, north, and then down south, and then going up north quickly. Up, inflating. Okay, that's Halimamau. Uh, again, another one. Let's go here. What's happening here? Again, rapid inflation. Inflation, deflation. Let's go to uh, Pahala. That's not good. This one here, Pahala. That's not good. Let's go to the Pu'o crater around here. Okay. Rapid inflating. Rapidly inflating. As you can see, compared to the last eruption of 2018 in Kilauea. Okay. It's going, it was going west and then up and then west and uh, north. Okay. And of course, inflating with magma. So I'll let, I'll let you, I'll give you the links so you can see what's happening in your area. Um, you may not think that things are moving, but they are. I was surprised to see, for example, Hudson Bay. What's happening in Hudson Bay? Um, it's moving all over the place. Look at this. Not many people live there, you know, Yukon territories, northern territories, mounties maybe in bears, but uh, look what's happening there. Look at this. Look at the amount of ups and downs that we have there. Look at this. This is Hudson Bay in Canada. What is going on there? We know that there's a lot of kimberlite in volcanoes. One of the past videos that we had about the lady that found a four, over four carat diamond in um, Arkansas State Park. Um, what's happening here? This is over the... Okay, look at how that is inflating. This area is full of kimberlite volcanoes um, in northern Canada, this area here. Let's see what that was happening here. That's uh, going northwest, and it's inflating. Look at that. Isn't that something? What's going on there? And it's inflating. That one is going southwest. And they're really inflating. This is going northwest, that's going southwest. What are they going to do? Collide with each other? Strange. So you can see what's going on in your area just by, you know, we don't hear this news, but this is um, a nice hobby to see what's going on in your area, where you're sitting at. <laughs> um, you know, not the, when I used to live in Canada, we were only 10 million people in the whole of the country. And... Um, it's one of the biggest countries in the world. But uh, now I think there's about 30 million people total population of Canada. Of course, all this is so cold. We had more, I used to live in Montreal, we had more cold there we had in, in Alaska, in uh, uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, because Montreal sits in the snow belt there. But that's why this is not very populated, but still there is a lot of movement going on there and a lot of uh, natural resources up in the Arctic, as we know, especially diamonds. Kimberlite volcanoes spitting, spewing diamonds, just like they do in Kansas and uh, um, Arkansas. So I'll leave links below for you for this. All of you in that area and the West, please be very careful and alert. Thank you for your support.